morning intuitives. I hope everybody's weekend's going well, or at least better than mine, because, you know, these days my life varies from busy as hell to overthinking and possibly bored if I'm somehow able to stop overthinking, which is rare these days. Uh, thanks everybody who takes the time again. You know, everyone who views this, hopefully it helps you. You know, if you think it's going to be helpful for someone else, please pass it on. Please like and subscribe so it could possibly show up in the algorithm. For someone else who my videos could possibly help, and feel free to post them wherever you want if you'll find it helpful for somebody to hear some advice from some nearly middle-aged, eccentric nobody, INFJ, who, you know, at best has some entertaining life experiences to pass on. So today, um, still working on that bigger video where I'm actually taking notes for, I'm going to try to do it tonight. But right now, something that's been going in my head that I wanted to get out is something that INFJs aren't good at. You know, in some situations you are, some situations we aren't. And that is waiting for us. Oh, the waiting is the hardest part, as Tom Petty would so infamously say. Now, certain things INFJs are fine waiting for. Waiting for the right person. Uh, waiting to make that connection with the with the right person, things of that nature, emotional senses, and you know, waiting to become intimate with somebody. We're probably the best at, but most of us are either demi or saposexual, so you know, we're not sexually compulsive at all, and most of us are, you know, not capable of. Uh, casual or friends with benefits relationships, at least, you know, the INFJs that I've talked to, and the ENFJs, you're right behind us in this. But, uh, yeah. but the type of waiting I want to focus this video on is basically, well, mostly, waiting for our plans to come to fruition. So INFJs, idealists, very forward-thinking, we don't live in the moment we try to plan, you know, years ahead, because... We're idealists, and we want our end game, and that's what life's all about to us. That, you know, shoot from the hip, nah. No, that sounds destructive and dangerous and, bore, and boring and could have catastrophic repercussions that could haunt us for the rest of our lives. Spontaneity bad. Most of the time. Probably. But the type of waiting I want to get into is when we're waiting, you know, we're very good at playing the long game, very good at making forward-thinking plans, and we're very patient in the sense that we can play the long game and wait for those plans to come to fruition. But we're not patient in, and where we have trouble waiting, is waiting to go to the next step. Like, the, the plan may be a 20-step plan. It's the stuff like waiting from go to, going to step, like, 4 to 5 is what drives us nuts. Because we're so hard on ourselves, we're so perfectionist, that we feel... Anything that gets in our way, anything that slows us down, any setback is going to explode the whole plan and all is lost and it was all for naught. And then we spiral into an NITI loop and brood for days. But most of the time, that's not the case. As INFJs, a lot of the time we assume the worst. So, you know, that can be good in that when the worst actually happens, we're more or less prepared for it. But most of the time, even in a setback, it's not that catastrophic worst case scenario that's actually happening. But we still don't wait all that well. And examples of what I'm talking about, like, let's say you apply for your dream job and you interview, you get a second interview and, you know, you have a real good chance at getting it. Waiting to hear back to see if you actually get that or not will drive you insane. And, of course, our minds will drift to, well, I haven't heard back because it's bad news. It's got to be bad news. It's got to be bad news. And especially if you're in a situation in life where it's like everything is riding on that. Like, you know, like, like getting that dream job would be, you know, hallelujah, my life just begun. Like, get me the fuck out of wherever I am. Because I'm speaking from experience. This was me two years ago when I was waiting for my final offer from the Arlington County Fire Department after I'd gone through my written exam, my physical ability test, my oral panel interview, 
my medical exam, my psych exam, my polygraph exam, all my background checks, including an FBI background check, and they can find anything, and my chief's interview. So after all that, you know, was, I got to be waiting to see if I was going to be one of the 23 out of 1,100 who tested, who actually got hired, it was driving me crazy. And, you know, as INFJs, again, we're not good at, like, at being idealists. We're not good at, like, make the most out of the moment. No, if, you, if the status quo sucks, it sucks. And all we can, the only thing that keeps us going is thinking of ways to get out of it, to change it. And when I mean change, I mean rapid change. We're not incrementalists. Like, if it's like, oh, well, my job sucks here. Um, I have no social life because the people here suck. And this area is depressing as hell. It's like, well... I'll go for my dream job that takes me somewhere else. I'm not going to go apply for some slightly better job in the same area I despised, and I don't care what anybody else tells me. I don't care how impossible they tell me my odds are. That's kind of how we think in the sense, and that long game to get to that goal is one thing, and we can stay pretty happy and motivated, but when it comes time to where we're just waiting on a decision to be made, waiting to hear back, it's insane. It's maddening. I'm going through it now. I'm waiting for my civil case to advance. You know, I was doing all right for a while because I was getting periodic updates. Like, I'm on the news. Now I'm in the news again. And somebody else is writing an article about me. And that's all good. The story's getting out there. The department's taking heat. Those that were facing retaliation who spoke up for me in the investigation probably aren't facing retaliation anymore. I don't know. They're not allowed to talk to me, which is also driving me a bit crazy because people that I was very close to that's hard to explain unless you know how close you get the people you go through something like a fire academy together unless you were in like fire police in the military it's kind of hard to explain but if you were in that you know militaristic uh environment with other people and went through the same hell the bond you form you know what I'm talking you know if you went through it you know what I'm talking about if you didn't you don't um yeah now those people can't talk to me you know, people from all over that were like my brothers and sisters who I finally felt like I was forging sort of the family that I always wanted because I certainly wanted to get away from mine was ripped away and now I'm back where I don't want to be and I'm waiting. You know, I was patient and then I got a right to sue letter and now I'm waiting for a court schedule and it's driving me insane because all I can do is wait. Which brings me to my other point is INFJs, not only do we hate waiting, we hate asking for help. You know, a lot of us have a hero complex to a certain degree. Like, I don't know, maybe the guy who wanted to be a firefighter might, you know, be a little bit of a hero complex thing. You know, ma mostly helping people, but if I'm being honest, you know, I, I the whole danger thing has its appeal, too. Um, yeah. So, losing that and being stuck here... And just waiting, waiting with no little to no sense of purpose, not knowing when I'm waiting till like as an INFJ, it's one thing to wait where it's like, OK, you're going to get this answer, you know, whatever answer it is, good or bad, you're going to get it in two weeks. You have a definite end date that, you know, you have to get through, you know, I, if I can just get myself to this day, I will know for me and for what drives a lot of INFJs crazy is when we're waiting for an indefinite amount of time, like I am now. And like I said, we don't like asking for help. Uh, we're very perfectionist. We're very stubborn. We feel like we have to do everything ourselves. We're one of the first people, probably right behind the ENFJs, that are willing to help others. But when it comes to helping ourselves, we're so hard on ourselves. And, you know, we're afraid to ask for help and where we feel like we don't deserve help, that we should be able to do it all on our own. And that can make waiting even harder because there's certain cases where you can ask people for help and that can vastly help improve your situation or help advance your plans but no we have to be stubborn and try to be like a one-man army and do it all ourselves and you know that's just how our mind works you know we we, we, feed, we hold ourselves as INFJs to nearly impossible standards and we hold other people to high standards too but the standards we hold ourselves to are you know, most people would define them as, as ridiculous, especially non-intuitive types or non-NFJ types especially. And I've been told that basically forever.
So that's one thing we have to get over. Ways to help with waiting. You know, you can try not to overthink. It doesn't work all that well most of the time. Uh, try to throw yourself deep into something, depending on what you're waiting on. Like if you have a job you like, you throw yourself into that because... INFJs, workaholics, a lot of the time, because a lot of our sense of self-worth and purpose in life is wrapped up in our careers, especially if, you know, you don't have a romantic relationship at the time, which all of us go through long periods of time where we don't, we spend, you know, there's usually large gaps in between our relationships, and I can hear a lot of the different personality types laughing at us, yeah, just shuttle, no, never. So there's that. If you don't have that, there's hobbies. You know, as INFJs, we all have things we like to do in our alone time. But when we're waiting and overthinking about what's going to happen with the thing we're waiting for, it's hard to concentrate our minds on anything else. This is one of the times where I don't really have any good answers. You know, I'm, basically this video is to more or less tell other people going through the same thing that you're not alone. Because I'm going through that exact same thing. Right now, my only real suggestion would be, whatever situation you're waiting on, try to learn as much as you can about it. Try to learn all the possible outcomes. Uh, be prepared. You know, be as prepared as you can for, you know, when it finally reaches that point where you're not waiting. Whatever you're waiting for, be as prepared as possible. If you're waiting for an interview or something, Get as much background information on the company, the person interviewing you, the history of it, the industry, all of that. Just, you know, be that walking encyclopedia because I've done that and they, they, you know. I once had an interview with a fire department where I knew where the chief went to college, how long he'd been through the department and all that. And he was like, holy shit, like, how do you know this? Not that INFJs are stalkers. We just think of things and if we can find it with a couple, you know clicks of a mouse and find a LinkedIn page and memorize a few facts that can set us apart from other people, we're going to do that. We're far too lazy to be stalkers. And, yeah, and, you know, that's obviously creepy. And we try our best not to be creepy, but assume that we are most of the time because we are eccentric and different from most people. So there's a little bit more advice in there. Like I said, as far as waiting goes for something where you don't have a set timetable of how long you're waiting, there's not a whole lot you can do. Just understand that, you know, you, you think you're going insane, but really you're not. You think nobody else understands what you're going through, but I would say all of us INFJs have been in that situation. Do what you can to try to, to, try to shorten the period you're waiting. I know, easier said than done. I'm doing it now, or trying to. Try to take your mind off it the best you can. Just remember when you're trying to, you know, end that waiting, not to sell out your integrity and trust your intuition along the way. If your intuition is telling you it's time to make a move, that can end your waiting. Make the move. Don't let other people talk you out of it. When INFJs don't trust their intuition, bad things usually happen.